Hello everyone, welcome to Analytics with Asmi. In this video, we are going to discuss Power BI interview question asked in a service based company. This is a part 3 of a Power BI interview series. If you haven't watched our first two videos, please do watch. Link is given in the description box. In this video, we are going to cover these topics General, DAX, Data Visualization, Power BI Desktop, and Power BI Service. We are going to discuss some scenario based question here. So let's start. The first question, which is a scenario based question, is You have been given a formula total is equal to A into B divided by C into D. Now, how do you optimize this in a DAX? Now, here we are going to create a simple major. So, here we are going to use a variable function. You can create a major here like total is equal to, we will create a variable for, variable for each of this letter. So, for variable A, we have given a value as a 10. For B, we have given value as a 20. For C, it is 30. And for D, it is 40. Then we have created a new variable E, which is showing a formula, which is giving a divide function. Divide function performs a division and returns a result. It contains three parameters, numerator, denominator and the alternate value, which is a optional which returns a blank on division by 0. So, here we have used a divide function. So, in the bracket, we have written a into b, which is a numerator, comma. Then we have written the denominator c into d. Then give comma. This is the alternate result. We have given a 0 and bracket complete. And finally, we have written the variable e. So, we have completed this scenario based question like this. Now, let's see practically how we can do in a Power BI. Now here you can see I have taken a financial data which is present in a Power BI. Okay. Now we we are going to create here the major. Okay. So I have created this total major. Here you can see I have used the same formula. We have created the variable for each letter. So variable A is equal to 10. Variable B is equal to 20. C is equal to 30. D is equal to 40. And finally we are giving variable E where we have put the formula divide A into B comma C into D comma 0 and finally we are returning the e now if we take the this value in a card now here you can see that we are getting a value as 0 0.17 so if we are dividing this okay if i if we are dividing 10 into 20 divided by 30 into 40 then we are getting this result 0 0.17 this is how you have to complete your scenario based question Second question is, tell me the common ways how you can refresh your data. Data refresh is a process of updating the data in Power BI with the latest data from the data source. When we import or connect data in a Power BI, the data is stored in a data set. And when this data in the data set is updated over a time, we need to refresh it. So the first method to refresh is a manual refresh. You can manually refresh data in a Power BI by just clicking on the refresh button. Here you can see that. Okay, we just present in a Power BI server or a Power BI desktop. This method is suitable for a small data set that don't require a frequent updates. Here you can see on the top right corner, we have this refresh option. Okay, here you can manually update your data. or you can also use a keyboard shortcut by pressing Ctrl, Alter, and R. Second data refresh method is a scheduled refresh. It occurs automatically at a regular or a specific intervals. This method is suitable for a large data sets that require frequent updates. You must have a Power BI Pro or a Power BI Premium license in order to schedule a refresh. You can automatically refresh the data at the chosen frequency and time. Here you can see the in this screenshot, this is a scheduled refresh. Here you have to go to the Power BI service, then you have to select the data, then you have to go to the settings, then select this schedule refresh and set it on. You have to decide if you want the data to be refreshed daily, weekly, or monthly. So you have to uh, you have to mention all this here in the requ requ uh, re refresh frequency 
here you have to mention whether you want it daily, weekly or monthly and decide what time of a day refresh should be happened. So, you have to mention here the time and just apply here. Third type of data refresh is a incremental refresh. If you refresh entire data in a data warehouse, it will consume lot of resources or might give you poor performance. So, in order to overcome this, we only try to load the data that has changed or arrived fresh after the last time data is refreshed. This significantly decreases the data load. So, here we are loading the new data and only the updated data. We have to just import the small portion of data here instead of the entire big data. Here it is getting refreshed periodically and here we are using the larger data set only. It will also decrease the data load. Here you have to mention the length of your data. Like here you can see here it is given as a 5 years. Then you have to mention the number of days refresh should happen. Okay. The third question is again a scenario based question. Here they have provided you a report in which there is a card is total sales. Okay. Here they have asked how to keep a default total sales values even if a external user apply filter. So even if a external user uh, use any slicer, the total value which is given in the card, it should not get changed. Okay. So we have to restrict the total sales to not change. So here we are going to use the edit interactions. Okay, what edit interactions do? It is a valuable feature in Power BI which is used to manage the interaction between the visuals. You can find the edit interaction here. Okay, you, you go to the format here and then you will find the edit interaction. Now, let's say practically how we can do this. Now, here we can see our sales report and here you can see a card total sales given. Now, if you are using this filter slicer, now here you can see that the value is getting changed. Okay, but what they have asked? This value should not change even if you are using the slicer. Okay. So, for that what we can do? We will go to the edit interaction. Okay. So, for that you go to the format here. Then go to the edit interaction here. Okay. Now, here once you click is you can see that here you will get a, some filters. Here you can see this is a filter and this is none. So, for that you have to click this none so that it should not change the value of the card. So, if I am clicking on this, I am pressing on this, now here it is done, it is locked. Now, it will not change even if you are using the slicer. Okay. Now, once this is done, now if you are clicking, now here you can see the value is 127.93. Okay. Now, if you am clicking on Canada, now you can see that all the visuals are getting changed, but this total cell value is not getting changed. This is how we have used the edit interaction which help to manage the interaction between the visuals. We just click on this none, okay, to restrict the total cell to not to change its value. Our next near base question is, question number 4, I have a category column with A, B, C, D and I want to show visual with X axis C, D, A, B. How would you handle this scenario? Now, here you can see we have a two columns, category A, B, C, D and the total cells is given for each category. Now, if we plot this in the line chart, it will show the series like A, B, C, D. But what the interviewer want? He is asking to show like C, D, A, B. Now, how we can do this? Here, we can create a major based on the conditions which is given. Okay. Now, let's see practically how we can do this. Now, if we create a simple line chart using the category and this total cells, we are getting this line chart with number as A, B, C, D. But what uh, interviewer is asking, he want a series numbered as C, D, A, B. Okay. So, how to do that? So, for that, we have created a new column, okay, with name as a condition. And we have put the same condition what interviewer is asked for. Here, interviewer is asking, first number should be C. So, it's 300. Total cell with 300. So, what we have condition we have written, if Sale total cell is equal to 300, it should show as a first number. Then next he is asking as a D. Okay. So, what we have written, if a total cell is equal to 400, then it should show a second number. And for the third number, he is asking for A. So, we have written, if a total cell is equal to 100, it should show third number. And for the fourth, it is show 200. Okay. So, likewise, we have created this condition. Okay, now once this is done, what you have to do, go back to our report view. Here, 
in the table go to this column so you have to click this category column we have to sort this according to our new column which is condition so i am clicking on this okay once you click this it will open the column tools here now here you will get the option sort sort your column by the new condition so if we click on this here you can see we can see our new condition which is we have created which we have created as a column okay once i click this now here you can see tada now we can see that we have given uh, now we can see the series as c d a b which is interviewer asking so by using the conditional column we can solve this scenario based question like this okay hope you understood it fifth and the last question is if any table took yesterday 15 minutes to refresh as shown in the schedule refresh details and today took 40 minutes then what may be the reason so there could be four possible reasons first is increased data volume in a source system if there been a significant increase in the amount of data been processed it can naturally lead to a longer processing time more data require more computational resources and time to process resulting in slower refresh rates second reason is changes in a data structure or complexity any alteration made to the structure of a data or its complexity can impact the refresh time for example any new fields are added to the data or if a relationship between the tables are modified third reason could be network or a server issues affecting the data retrieval problem with the network connections or the server hosting the data can lead to a delay in a data retrieval and the last point is concurrent processes impacting system performance if there are other processes running simultaneously on your system competing the resources such as cpu memory or a disk it can affect the performance of a refresh process so these are all factors can individually or collectively contribute to the increase in a refresh time so this is all about this video if you like this video please give thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel see you in the next video thank you for watching